Okay, my clock says four o'clock, so I'm going to start now. My name is Laura, and I'm from Water Games, and we are making a game, and in our game we are using the Yuma character system. Um, we've been using that for a while. We've been through a number of different releases. The latest release should be coming out any day now. I've been helping the guys a little bit, just testing a little bit and rearranging some folders for them and keeping in touch with them so uh, they're working really hard now at this very moment so um, hopefully it won't be long but I think the results will be well worth the wait I know some of you have waited patiently for this um, it takes a long time it's a open source program it was once uh, uh, funded by unity but it has since become open source and the guys working it on it are volunteers and they are doing an amazing job it's a very complex system um, and they've made it so much better and easier to use if you use the old yuma the one that's on the asset store now i think you will be really happy with this yuma anyway as you can see on unity i have a scene open here this scene you can find this is a really nice scene for testing. Now I've changed it, I've customized it, but I will show you where you can get the original version of it. If you go to Yuma, Extensions, Dynamic Character System, which is this the name of this version of Yuma, to Example, and Scenes, you can see a few different scenes here. This is this last scene, scene here. I, if I clicked on it, you can see the original. Here's what the original looks like. But I have changed it. I've changed the DNA a little bit, or the DNA, the uh, um, UI a little bit to make it how I wanted it be, to be for my testing. And I use this project simply to test clothing, to test the humus, to make sure everything was working. So I'm going to go back to my project. Okay, so now I'm back to my project. As you can see, I changed it a little bit. I changed this to gender from race. I only have human races in, in our game, so for that reason, all I really needed was to change gender. But in the original one, it's change race. Um, right now, in, in my version, I have two races. In Yuma, the different genders are considered different races. So I have a, a male race, male human race and a female human race. There, there are examples in the dynamic character system release that will be coming out of other races that you can make. And if you look at Secret Anorik's YouTube channel, you will find um, a walkthrough from him on how to create your own race from any creature you might want uh, on the asset store. He, I think he shows a, a bipedal monster and it's really cool. And it's not extremely hard to do once you play around with it it's probably in some ways easier than actually dressing these guys although that to me that's really easy having started out when this was so complex that it was like mind-boggling to what it is now it's a lot better okay so the first thing I want to show you is some tips that I kind of reorganized. Not only did I redo this, but I also reorganized a little bit. When you open your Yuma folder, after you install it into Unity, you'll see that you have the content. This content has all the slots and new bodies and stuff like that. It'll be different in the new version that's coming out. So what I have here is basically the content section from the old version, but it will, will be a little look a little different, but essentially the same. Okay, now what I did was I wanted to put all the clothing, most of them are, for, is, are from uh, Will B or Just B on the forums. I think a lot of you have probably seen his stuff. So what I did was I made my own custom content folder and I put all of, you can see here all of his stuff. I've got some stuff from Arteria here too, I think. And I've got stuff from um, a few other people but most of it's from Will. Okay. Anyway, what you the first thing you need to do is you need to have a resource folder. Now there is a resource folder in the Yuma that you get, 
when you when it comes to you however I like to have my resource folder in my custom content it makes it easier for me so I made my own resource folder right here and then what I did was the resource folder that used to be it, that came with Yuma I went ahead and I just changed changed that um, change the name of it totally change the name of it so it's not resource okay and what you want to make sure is that, that you have the resource folder. I'm just noticing that this says recipes instead of resources. But this should say resources. Okay. So you should make sure the resources folder says resources, which is the name of my resources folder. And then you it, it will dynamically add everything you put in that folder into the game. Okay. The other thing you want to make sure is that all of your stuff that you're going to use, whether it's some slots from up here or whether it's from your resource folder, ends up in these libraries, the slot library and the overlay library. So what you do, what I do, is I just take the entire Yuma folder and I drag it over there and I wait for it to load. Then I go to the overlay, drag the entire Yuma folder, and it'll only take the overlays. And I drag that over there and let it fold, load. Okay. And the race library, you have to make sure that you have all of your races that you want to use in here. I have the female and I have the male in here. Okay? So hopefully you guys understand that. And in my resource folder, I have made base females. I have all this information in here. I've put all this information I need. The DNA, the expressions. Um, I'll, I'll explain what the SSS slots are. I have everything in here I need, okay, to make my base Yuma, all right? And in here I have everything I need to make my male Yuma. And in the recipe folders, I have recipes, these are called wardrobe recipes, that I've made for everything that I want to change on my Yuma. So hair, clothing, eyebrows. The base has his body, oops, the wrong thing. The base has his body, you can see here, has everything I need for his body. Okay. So let's say I want to make a new base recipe. I can create and I go down here to text recipe because this is what I want to use for the base. Okay. So I click on that and here it is. Now what I need to do, the first thing I need to do is take my, ba my race, which I have my race right here in this folder to make it easy for me. I don't have to hunt for it. Put that in there and now I have the race. Okay. Now I need to drag slots. So what I would do is go to my slots, which I have, I actually I think I left his slots up here but you can move it down there too if you want. So I've got his slots up here under, I didn't explain what that was yet, but I will, okay. So they're under here, so I have to go up here to his slots, body slots. Where are his body slots? I know he's here somewhere. Oh, here, here they are, up. Oh, okay, I know where the slots are. Okay, these are, you can find the slots here, but what I actually did was put my slots in with the face pack, and I'll tell you why I did that in a second. It may seem strange, but it worked better for me to do it that way because I wanted my slots to be SSS. Will's face pack uses something called a uh, fast fake skin shader, which you can get at the asset store. Oh, fast fake skin. It's right here, and you can get this at the asset store. It's free. And it's really a nice shader, so I highly suggest that. But in order to use that, you're going to have to change out the Yuma materials. So what I did was I went ahead and I took the slots and I changed them out. So here's the male slots that I used. If you let's look, like, let's look at one of them. Let's look at the torso. Okay, if we look at the torso slot, you can see that the, I have the Yuma SSS test Yuma material. So if you want to use the skin shader, this would normally say Yuma material. It's the metallic uh, material. You'll want to change that and put this Yuma SSS test Yuma material, which you can get in the folder for the fast fake skin. Okay, so you, well, actually you have to make the Yuma 
I'm sorry, you have to make the Yuma material, which is very easy. You just go here and well, we'll just click here. To make a Yuma material, you just go create here and you make the Yuma material and you set it up like any other material, okay? So you can look at the material that's in there and you can see how to do that. All right, so going back to our guy that we're making, our extra base recipe. Okay, our new text recipe. This would be renamed. I'm not going to rename it now because it would be the same name and it would mix things up, but I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so go down to your slots. So you would put your torso slot, for example. Oop, slipped out of there. This is one reason it's easier to have them close by so you're not like going all over the place when you accidentally do something. Or you could do this. You could lock the inspector and that way they're going to stay in there. Of course, I just locked the wrong one. So that's not going to help. So lock the inspector. Go down here and you want to drag all of these in here. Now some people set up their base characters differently. Um, I I don't use elf ears or pig noses, so I don't need the same thing that you might need. Um, if you are going to use make elves, you're going to need to use the swapped heads instead of the face. Okay, so now I have all my slots in here. Now I need to put the overlays on there. Okay, so my overlays for my bodies. The ones I use are right here, Will's body retex. Okay, you may use different things. Okay, so, oops, that's is that the female? Maybe, okay. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, so for my bodies, the torso is going to need the male body overlay. So I'm going to put that on there. The legs will also use the male body overlay. The hands will use the male body overlay. If somebody doesn't know how to uh, get these overlays, they're usually they're, these are in there already for you. Except I did change, or the materials were I think either I or Will somebody changed the materials. But um, if you have to make them for your own items, um, I can show that in another tweet. I've made millions of these things. Okay, so now I made all put all these. All these have the same. So what I want to do is add a shared color and this is important because otherwise your colors won't match and I'm gonna name it skin okay so now I have a shared skin color what I want to do here is use the shared skin color this when you do this it makes sure everything that uses the male skin color is going to use the same skin color if you want to change your skin color okay All right, so then they'll condense like that once you get it done. So the only two I have left to do now, well, I have the face. Okay, let's find a face. We can use any of these faces here. Let's see, where are my faces? Okay, so we're going to use one of Will's faces. We'll use this face one. Go down here. The face overlay right here. So I copy that to the face. I want to use shared skin so that his skin matches his body. Okay, now I have eyes. The eyes is usually in a shared pack because male and female share the same textures for the eyes. Let's find that one. I don't think that one's in that one. Okay, where are you eyes? There we are. Okay, so we need the eye overlay. Put that there. And you also need the eye adjust. That's so that you can change the pupil color. Okay, so I also need to make another at shared color. That one will be called eyes. Oops. Okay. So we're going to make this one eyes so that it'll change the pupil color. Okay. The last one is the inner mouth. Let's see where's the inner mouth. The inner, inner mouth might be in some weird place. So while I tried to organize, I didn't always do a good job. So let's find the inner mouth. Of course, we get a bunch of stuff. And we need the overlay. 
Okay, this is a shared overlay for the inner mouth. The inner mouth is, is an old uh, overlay, so it hasn't really changed. So where is that inner mouth? So we put the inner mouth overlay here. Okay, and that's all to all you need for it. Since inner mouth doesn't share a color with anything, that's all you need to do. Now all recipes are made this way. If you were using a um, making a recipe for clothing, you would instead create create instead of click creating a Yuma text recipe, you would create a wardrobe text recipe, and I'll show you how to do that later. But this is very simple to do, easy to do. Okay, I'm going to go back to my mail recipe. I'm actually going to delete this one because I don't want it to show up. Okay, any questions? Oh, somebody asked if they were scriptable objects. Are what all scriptable objects? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> that might be a better question for somebody who codes. I'm not a coder, so that's not probably not a good question for me. If one of the uh, Yuma people were here, you could probably ask them. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to delete this. Okay, now I'm going to go in. Hopefully it works, even though I changed the name of the folder. Okay, <gasps> he's naked. Sorry, he's naked. I hope it doesn't offend anybody's sensibilities or twitch, but he has no you know, important part. So anyway, here's the male Yuma, base male. And now I'm going to change it to female, and she'll probably be naked too. Okay, so there's the female. I'll quickly change back to male so nobody gets too upset. Okay. He's supposed to have underwear on, but I must have forgotten to put his underwear on his... What, what I can do actually is go in here to the base mail when it's not on here, or no, not here, in here. I can go here to the customizer and I can actually... Oh, where is it? Okay, I can actually drag wardrobe and I do have the underwear here, so I'm not sure why the underwear aren't working, but oh well, hopefully it doesn't upset too many, too many people. But what we can do in here is go in... Oh no, the wardrobe's not working. Oops, something went wrong. Why does this always happen when you're twitching? So what I'm going to do is go back and find out why. Oh, maybe it's because I didn't update the index. That would do it. Anytime you make changes to like I did, you have to update the index. Let's see if it works this time. Maybe he'll even have his underwear this time. Nope. Darn it. Okay, well, let's see. Let's go back to... This is rather embarrassing that this does not work because it should. There he is. Okay, now he's got underwear. Yay, yay, yay. And now the wardrobe system. Okay, now again, I these are this is this is the UI that came with this with all these things. I haven't changed these at all. These are the ones that come with Yuma. The only thing I've done is I've taken pictures of the assets that I've put in here. So um, with this UI system, you can change the clothes. They're easy to do. You can change, put a helmet on the guy. You can give him body patches, skin features. I think I'll maximize this so we can see this a little better. Okay, some of you saw me do my other tweet, which I forgot to videotape, so that's why I'm doing it again. You can put clothes on him. You can change his skin color is the only one we'd probably see here. You can change his skin color, which will take something a little more so you can see his skin color is changing. Okay, all of that is relatively easy to do. Okay. So now, how do you, you're probably wondering, I'm sure you're asking the question, how do you get the wardrobe recipes? So I'm going to show you how to make a wardrobe recipes. I put all my wardrobe recipes in my content pack. Here's my resources folder, my mail, and here are all the recipes. Okay, I, there's everything in there. Beards, eyebrows, face, anything else. Yep, 
Yeah, these are the we do use PBR and uh, Umoto. Um, <laughs> these are the base models. Um, I use textures made from Will. Will is now including, he has now given us permission in Yuma to use his male textures, um, the, the ones that he's given us, not all of them, but the ones that he's given us, which are basically base textures, and they're very nice, and they look very good. I also use the skin shader, which again helps, and um, that, that kind of gives a little, I don't know, glowiness to the male, which looks pretty good, I think, or, or not just to the male, but to the female too. So that's why they do look better than they used to look. So we'll go back in with him. You can see they do look a little better. They have a little bit of sheen to them. People use different shaders on these. They've, I think people have tried all kinds of different things. These I like these. They look pretty good. I cannot vouch for their performance, but they're supposed to be fast. So I used them on a scene where I had 70 Yumas in it in a fairly small area and had pretty good FPS, so they are pretty good. But yes, we do use PBR textures. I, I know the old Yuma didn't, but the ones now do. The, the whole, even if you use the basic and don't use the SSS shaders, um, the, it still looks good. Now, I use the SSS shaders only for the bodies and for any overlay that goes directly on the body. Like, for example, this is an, the underwear is an overlay on the body. Any tattoos or skin features would be overlays on the body. Anything on the face, like if you wanted to change his face, which actually we can do. I have I put different faces in here so you can actually change his face. I still have the beard pictures. I don't know why. So here he's got a, a different face, so you can change his face. The beards too. I um, used the same overlay. Anything that is not a slot, but it's the same slot, it's just an overlaying onto the skin or onto the face, you have to use the SSS textures. Something that has a slot, like for example, I think I have a slot beard here. This one does not have to use the SSS textures. In fact, I would recommend that you try some good hair textures for the, the, for the beards like that or the hair. Okay, these are okay, but um, you can probably find some decent hair shaders. I don't think anyone's found a perfect hair shader. This is hair made by Will, by the way. So, um, but nobody's found any perfect hair shaders. But, you know, if you can, you could try those. It'd probably work better. Okay? So now I'm going to show you the wardrobe recipes. Okay, to make a wardrobe recipe, it's exactly the same. You just go in, and this time you choose a wardrobe recipe. Okay, a wardrobe collection is, is a collection of wardrobe recipes. A, a wardrobe recipe is like this. Okay, so the first thing, again, you'll want to do is drag in your race. This way you could, if you had a bunch of different humanoid races that could all wear the same clothes, you would drag in more than one. Okay, you can put a thumbnail here. So there's different thumbnails, like let's say I want to put in, I don't know, let's say I want to do... Um, since we're doing a male, where's something male-ish? Where's, let's do a male cap. Okay, so there's the male cap. I actually just took those in and took pictures of them in the, um, in here. And then took them into Photoshop and made them the right size and turned them into sprites. Okay, so your wardrobe slot. Where do you want that wardrobe slot to fit on the body? Obviously, you want this to be... Where, let's see if I have a helmet or a hat or something like that. So you want it to be either, you could say that hair, you could use it for hair if you want, but it might be better to use it for a helmet. The other option you can do, and I did this, I went into the race right here, and I was able to add my own wardrobe slots. So it's really easy to do. All you have to do is make sure that after you add them, that you go back to this ind index and you refresh it, and then you'll get your... Uh, new slots and your new slots that doesn't mean that you're actually adding a slot to it it just means that you're adding, adding items that will be named different it'll be in a different category so it actually works really well so let's go back to my test recipe if I can find it there it is okay so I would change this to headwear since it's a hat okay what do I want to suppress well I want to suppress hair 
because obviously if you put this helmet on, on a guy, his hair is going to stick through it. So I want to make sure that the hair is suppressed. Okay, the hair doesn't show up. I want it to hide any base slots. In this case, I do not want it to hide any base slots. But if instead of using headwear, I was making a shirt and I was using torso or shirt, whichever you want to call it, I think in this one it is called chest. So if I wanted to use a chest one, then I wouldn't necessarily need to suppress anything unless I want to suppress full outfit, but I don't think that's really important right now. But what I'd want to do instead is hide the torso slot. This is one thing that Yuma does really well. <laughs> no, the, the, no uh, Dylan, the male do not have important parts, sorry. Only, you know, only the female has important parts, and even then, not every important part. So, sorry about that if that's disappointing. So anyway, going back to headwear, suppress hair, and we want to hide, it doesn't hide any slots, because we definitely don't want it to hide the head. Okay, then you do the same thing. You'll drag, you'll go down to wherever that pack is. I think this one is in the poor set male, I don't remember if it's male one or more male two, you go in here and you look at the slots and where's the male, oh, it must be in male two, okay, male two, slots, we have the poor cat hat cap, here's the slot, you drag the slot in there, and then you go to the overlays and you find the cap poor two for the overlay, okay, now, you can, if you wanted to, you don't really have to add shared colors in here because there's only one color on this cap, but just let's say this cop, cap had like a decoration on it that was two different colors, okay, and, and Will had two different color overlays. You would add both overlays, and then you could go in here in your shared colors, and you could have cap color one and cap color two, and you could set each separate color overlay to cap one to cap one and one to cap two, and that way you could have two different colors on the wardrobe. Okay, so this is how you make a wardrobe, and it's the same no matter what. The only thing that changes is how you uh, categorize the slot, what, what you name the slot or pick as your slot, what you suppress, or if you suppress anything, at, or what you hide and hide and suppress are different okay suppress will hide hide another slot that's already on there such as the hair another slot remember that not an overlay but a slot well this one will hide a slot that you want to get rid of and completely make transparent okay so that it's it's not in the way this keeps you from having clothing, you know, your arm, your elbow poking out of your clothing or having holes in the chest. It's a different system than some. Some systems just overlay the clothing on top of it and they skin it to it. I mean, these are skin to the bones, but they skin it to the skin and then, you know, when they walk around, it still pokes through. So this way works better. Some people don't like that. Some people do. I think it works better. I think it's faster. Um, I've used both systems. When we worked um, in another engine, we used a system where they stacked all the clothing on the, the character, and you just hid and, hid and revealed it as you went. And I didn't. we didn't really care for that system. We like this one much better. Okay? So that's how you do recipes. Um, the other thing, let me get rid of that recipe, though. I don't want, want it in here. This is my kind of working project, so I don't want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of it. I'm going to delete that. Okay. But had I kept it in there, well, if it was a new recipe, something I hadn't put in there already, I would have had to go here and create, update the index before it would show up. All right. So the other thing, I, I don't think I showed you this. I know I showed it in my previous Twitch, but unfortunately... That one was not videotaped because I didn't know what I was doing. So just to show you, give you an idea here of how you can change different colors. There I changed his eyes. I can go back and change his eyes to brown. Okay, And this UI is very nice. In fact, I think that you could probably take this and put it in your game after you, you know, put your art in there and you know, put different scenery stuff and everything. Okay, And you can see here that, that when I picked on face DNA, it called up the DNA of the face. Now these sliders are really great and you can go in and adjust their limitations. 
Like maybe you don't want that the slider to slide down that low, or maybe you want the slider to go up higher, and you can play around with those um, uh, elsewhere to get set those limitations. Okay, you, there's a lot of little things you can do, and this, along with being able to actually change the face texture, can help you make different looking uh, humans for yourself, or in even allow your players to do it in a game. Your your positions. Your rotations. I know this is Secret Anorak's favorite, so I'm gonna like show you that. Okay, your size. And remember, if you have a different race, if you watch Secret Anorak's video, you can see how easy it is to actually create sliders for your new race. So you know you could have, you know, if you have a tail on it, you could make his tail grow. You could do all kinds of different things. Okay, it's amazing what Yuma can do now. You just have to take the time to learn it. Okay, I, I spading or spacing. I like that one. I think that one's kind of cool. Okay, we notice that I don't put eyebrows in the base because you can change the eyebrows if they're in the wardrobe. So I kind of like that. So anyway, so these are for the face. All the different things you can do with the face. You know, you can make the nose size. You can make them have a bigger nose. You know, you can change. You can even change things like his nose uh, inclination. You can change his nose curve so he has a curvy nose or you could even give him a bump on his nose whatever you like which is kind of fun and then there's also corresponding body DNA. Now some of these you're going to want to limit especially if you're going to let your players play with them because you may not want people making players with big long arms more useful is the arm width so you can make them more muscular if you want you can give them a big belly now this skin isn't the best for a big belly um, there is a smooth skin but I'm not really happy with it so I didn't put it on there but you can see here how he's got a big belly if you in, in case you want to play like the Sims and have pregnant men there you go you can make a pregnant guy okay and there's lots of other body sliders you can even change his his gluteus. There you go, Dylan. Okay. Change his height. You can make little short guys. You could make teenagers if you wanted to just by making them smaller and making them thinner. You can make his muscle mass change. You can change his weight. So he's skinnier. That, that would be great for making some, a young person. Okay. Upper muscle waist okay all kinds of different stuff you can change on them okay so it's pretty cool it's pretty nice to use and uh, um, I really like it right now my programmer is working <laughs> my programmers do stuff like getting the humans in the game for me I don't do those kind of things that that's their job if I did that then they wouldn't have anything to do really so um, right now my programmers are doing that my one of them has already gotten the old Yuma in the game so that probably won't be a problem for him but he's he has a a real uh, full-time job so outside the game company so he doesn't um, have as much time but I have my other programmer right now working on getting it in his scene so he can use it with ice and other things um, you probably have may have seen some of his ice videos that he does for his twitch um, they're on our YouTube channel for water games if you just look for w a t r e games youtube channel you can see his his and uh any videos that we've done so anyway is there anything else anyone wants to see i know that it's overwhelming when you get in here but really when you play with it for a while it isn't really too bad in fact I even made, oh, I can't show you this because I don't have it set to show you, but I even made a Yuma sword, which I will re reveal in later um, twitches, which is pretty darn cool. Another thing you can do, too, and, and this is one thing I forgot, is that you can save out, let's say that I, let's say I work really hard and I make something I really like. I need to change this, though, to unmaximize it. Okay, save, made something I really like. I can go into the scene and I can select this avatar and see I have one named Sue here. 
I can go here to Yuma. You can go you can go here and you can save your avatar. You can save it as an optimized avatar as a text. I actually saved it as an opt optimized avatar. But what I'm going to do is lo load one that I made. And this is Sue. Let's see if I can find Sue. Where'd Sue go? She's in. She where is Sue? Let's see if where Sue went. There's Sue. Okay, so I can save Sue, and I can open Sue, and Sue will take the place of the other one. So when I go back to the game mode, I now have Sue instead of the lady in the underwear. So that's a way you can you can sort of save out if you make some you like. Like let's say you're making NPCs, you can make them and you can save them out, and then you can you know replace them in here and now you have the avatar which somehow gets magical way gets put into the game which I'm sure isn't magical but um, uh, Marcus could probably tell you right Marcus so um, but I will do something on that later so anyway I think they look pretty nice you know I mean they're not dad's quality if that's what you like but honestly as I've said before in other videos I actually prefer that my characters in my game look real I'm not making a game where you know that's like a TV show where everybody looks like a model I want to make a game where you know they look like normal people oh here's something else really cool that I found out the other day that you know all the stuff I've done and I never realized this before so I'm going to show you this so I didn't show it in my last video, so you guys get to see it. Push that button, and then you get to see that she works with her animation. She even has expressions on. So she is talking and doing weird eye movements, which I'm not real fond of those eye movements. But it's pretty cool. So you can actually put expressions on it. Um, Salsa supposedly works with it, and there's one called... Uh, randomize randomize movement which I have purchased but I haven't tried it yet if I get it on there I'll do another uh, twitch and show you how it works and how to put it on there so here is Sue she's got kind of a big mouth which is probably one issue with I see with expressions so it'd be nice maybe to try something different but anyway any other questions is everybody happy I'm going to make uh, put the video up so you can see it. I'll probably wait to see if there's any more questions before we stop streaming. Ryan says he's not happy and I'm not sure. Why are you not happy, Ryan? Who knows? He's just unhappy. He probably didn't get his, you know, regimen of chocolate for the day or something. Or he needs an afternoon nap, which that may be true. And for those of you who might want to see the body, oops, let's not, we don't need to do that. There she is moving. Now the Yuma idol is not the prettiest idol in the world because they kind of look like they're just swaying back and forth. You should see a whole row of them. Anyway, they look pretty nice. And Will's clothes are absolutely amazing. So if you haven't looked at his clothes, I highly recommend them. He has he makes the best stuff for Yuma. And I know he's gonna go go work somewhere else soon for um um some big game he posted on his thing, which is really very, very cool. Oh, I just realized I lost my Oh, there we go. So um yeah, look at his clothes and let him know how much you appreciate him if you if he uses them so that or if you use them so that after he's done with his job or in his whatever spare time he has, he continues making them for us. So because I have a lot of Will's clothes and I love Will's clothes. They're really great. So Let's see if I can get something that looks interesting. Some of these I need to divide up a little bit because there's a poor dress. And this is a good one to show you an example of what you can do with the color. So see with dress one, I have, I have two different colors on the dress so I can change those colors. That's a really ugly color though, isn't it? Oops. So I can change the colors of the dress and make them different. 
which is kind of fun. I can make the shoes different. I can make her hair color different. So you can do a lot of customization with this. And I can play around with her face if I want a different face. Gives, it, gives her just a little bit of difference in her face, which you can then change again. And I know, know there's probably another face pack coming out sometime soon. Or you could always make your own. And that's another story, which I'm now she's got freckles on that face. That's kind of cute. That makes me really, really feel the need to change her hair to red. There she is. And some other clothes that Will has that I really, really like. There's a noble lady's dress. And, and headwear, a noble lady's hat. I notice there's a little bitty hole here, which I'm not, that has some, this neck is a slot, so that's probably why. So just something that needs to be, I think it's just the corner of it just needs to be fixed a little bit, which I can do by taking it into Maya. So here's the noble lady. One thing about dresses that I do, and I don't know if everybody does this, but I always make, I always hide the legs as well. Because the, in, in my situation, the dresses are long. In a short dress, you wouldn't want to do that. But in a long dress, that works fine. And the full underwear. Oops. Now she's got underwear underneath it. That's something that I kind of like that idea. Because then I could, if I wanted to, maybe not for, it depends on, I guess, ooh, no. Oh, no, that was bad. Oops, that's bad, too. Okay, never mind. Let's put her in a dress. Now we have two things on there. So that means I didn't suppress the skirt like I should have. I should have made the dress su suppress any skirts. So that's something I should do. But you know what? You can learn from my mistakes as well, right? So here she is in a peasant dress and a noble hat that she stole. Notice too that I have now layered, accidentally of course, this mantle, which is from shoulders onto her dress but it works some of them won't layer and some of them will and that's something that for your game you'll have to figure out a way to mark those and make them only work with certain items so that's sort of a original thing so well I guess there's no questions because I've been rambling on for a while now and I haven't got any questions so hopefully this will help some of you. I know there's been people that have had trouble with this. If it doesn't, you know, ask questions on the forum, on the Yuma forum. Tell me what you need, what you'd like to see. Um, if I can't do it, you know, there's other people like uh, Secret Anorik and other people who uh, make videos and do things to try to help people. And um, the documentation on Yuma is not the greatest, and I know that. Um, but it takes a long time to write documentation, and all of us have our own projects as well. So... Um, but anybody's welcome. It's an open source project. Any wel anyone's welcome to contribute, to make their, uh, to make documents, to make videos, to do anything they can to help the community, um, so we can keep Yuma alive. So okay, that's about it. So if nobody has any questions. Unless I, unless people ask for it, this, you know, I, I probably won't be doing a lot more with Yuma, but I'll do things when I can. Um, I want to do some other twitches, maybe with trains and um, skills and some of the other things that we're making for our game. So hopefully I'll be able to do some of those in the near future. It's funny because I have a cat who gets really jealous of me talking to other people, and he he hears me talking to you guys, so he decided to jump into my lap so that uh, he could be part of the conversation. So he's now in my lap. You're welcome, and I'm glad. I hope I helped somebody out. So I uh, will talk to you later. Feel free to watch the video if you need anything else or share it or whatever. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.